Hello, and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this picture. This picture demonstrates how to build a narrative with the minimum of components. The simple composition, together with a hint of colour, invokes pink champagne without actually showing any champagne. And in this video, I'll show exactly how I did it. OK, so let me show you what I've got set up so far. So on this table, I have a piece of white mount board, and I'm using this as a base for the picture. Uh, now, for my subject, I have these uh, champagne glasses, uh, and I've also added a little cork here, just to add a bit of interest. OK, so the camera I'm using uh, is uh, this DSLR, uh, and I have this tethered into Capture One software. Uh, now, on the front of the camera here, I have a 24 to 70 zoom lens, uh, and on the top of the camera, I have a flash sync trigger. Now, this particular flash sync trigger can also control the energy in the studio flashes. OK, so I'll just pop this on the top of this tripod, like that, and we'll compose the image. So, just looking through the viewfinder, we we'll just focus that up, out there somewhere, uh, and maybe just zoom that in ever so slightly, down there somewhere for now. OK, so with that done, what I'll do is just take an uh, image without any flash, just to see what uh, contamination I'm getting from the house lights. So with the camera settings as they are, uh, we'll just grab an image. OK, so as you can see in this image, uh, with these camera settings, which is 1 30th of a second for the shutter speed uh, and 2.8 for the aperture at 100 ISO, uh, I'm actually getting a reasonable image just with the house lights. Uh, you can see in here that you've got um, highlights in all the glass uh, from uh, the house lights. Uh, so it doesn't look particularly good, uh, but it's a start. But we don't actually want any of these. We don't want any of this highlight contamination, really. So in order to get rid of that, so that it's just the flash which illuminates the subject, what I can do is alter these settings to get rid of the ambient light. Um, so instead of using a thirtieth of a second, I'll use the flash sync speed for this camera, which is 1 250th of a second. And also, instead of using 2.8, uh, I'll use a more reasonable aperture of maybe f8, like that. So with these settings set, I'll just grab another image. OK, and we can see from this image uh, that is much better. It's got rid of most of the contamination. I still have the house lights uh, in the glass. But we'll see how we go with that. I may need to turn the house lights out for the proper capture. OK, so with the settings that I've got at the moment, to get rid of most of the ambient light uh, from the house lights, next thing to do will be to set up a background. So for a background, I'm just using this C stand uh, with an arm on it like this. And I'm going to use uh, another piece of uh, white mount board. Now, I normally use grey for these uh, backgrounds, but for this particular case, uh, I'm going to use white because I actually want it to be contaminated from the main light, which will be illuminating the subject. OK, so let me get a piece of card. Here we are, another piece of card. And I'll just slide this on here with the aid of these uh, two clamps. There. Now it's important to note the distance that I have this uh, from the subject and from the base that I'm using. Uh, this is very close. Uh, I've just about got enough room down the bottom here to put a light in to illuminate this, which is uh, where we get the uh, pink glow from in the final image. Uh, but the whole thing is very compact. And I've done that on purpose, so that, uh, again, like I said before, when this is illuminated, some of the light will spill onto the background here, uh, which is really what I want. 
OK, so with this set, uh, the next thing to do would be to put a light in down the bottom here. So here we are. I have this small studio head, which I'm just going to place at the back like that. Uh, and this is pointing straight at the card. OK, so with that in position, uh, it's best just to grab an image. Now, I've set uh, just an arbitrary energy level on that flash, uh, so we'll grab an image and see what the results look like. OK, so you can see from this uh, that it is way overexposed, uh, which is to be expected because it is fairly close uh, to this background. So I think initially I'm going to take um, four stops of energy uh, off that flash, like that, and we'll grab another image. There, that's much better. So possibly still a little light, but you can see we're getting the beginnings of a, a graduation. I'm going to leave that as it is for the time being. OK, so with that bit set, it's time to set the next light. OK, so for the main illumination of the subject, I'm going to use this uh, studio head. This is a Profoto D2. Uh, this is 1,000 joules uh, and has a modding light built into it. And on the front of this, I'm going to put a modifier on, uh, and I'm going to put a uh, one foot by four foot softbox on the front of the head. Just pop that on there, like that. Let's clamp that on. There. OK, so with that in this sort of orientation, we'll take that round the back. And what I'm going to do with this is just place it so that it's above uh, this background, pointing at the subject. There we are, like that. So with that light now set, what I'm going to do next is turn off the light which was giving the glow on the background so we can set this one up properly. So I'll do that now, just from the remote. And just at an arbitrary energy level uh, on the uh, light at the top there, uh, we'll just grab an image to see what the exposure's like. OK, so we can see at this arbitrary energy level um, it's probably a little overcooked. Uh, so I'm going to take that down by, initially, um, two stops. Let's try two stops. Like so, and try that again. There, that's much better. So this is more like the sort of thing that I want. The graduation on the background here is just what I want. Uh, and that's just caused by the light at the top here just glancing down the card. Uh, but the light on the, uh, on the baseboard here is also good. Uh, we're getting a nice graduation off to the sides, which is, uh, again, what I want. OK, so with that set, what I'll do now is turn the uh, glow back on, uh, and we'll try them both together. OK, so with the illumination more or less set, uh, what I'm going to do is just fine-tune the uh, composition uh, so again, just looking through the viewfinder, I'm just going to uh, zoom that in ever so slightly just to see where we are a bit better. There. I think somewhere around there should do me. OK, so with that set, what I'll do is just grab an image. Yes, that's a, a little more compact, I think. Uh, and the uh, exposures are OK. We might need to fine-tune them a little bit. Uh, the front of this cork is a little dark. We'll address that uh, shortly. Uh, but the first thing that I want to do before I do that is just make the background glow uh, a bit more pink. And to do that, I'm just using this um, rose pink uh, filter, which is a Lee filter number 332. Uh, and I'm just going to attach this over the front of the light at the back here. Just like that. There we are. So with that in place, what we'll do now is just grab another image. Yes, so this is starting to come together now. 
Uh, I think the glow needs a bit of fine tuning. Uh, I might just take that down uh, by one stop just to uh, see what that looks like. Uh, so just selecting that head, I'll just take a stop of energy off that and we'll grab that again. There, that's better. That's more of the sort of graduation that I wanted. It was a bit over the top before. Uh, and I particularly like the way that we're getting all the refraction in the glass here, uh, which is quite nice. OK, so nearly there. We just need to do something about this cork, which is uh, a little dark. And also, there are still highlights in the glass from the house lights. Uh, so we'll address both of those problems at the same time. OK, so what I'm going to do to address that uh, problem is use this mirror, which I've attached to this piece of wood, so it'll stand up on its own. Uh, and I'm just going to use this just to recycle some of the light from this onto the front of the cork. So in order to be able to see what I'm doing, what I'm going to do is turn the modelling light on on this and turn the house lights out. So I'll just select that head and turn the modelling light on. Like so, and then we'll turn the house lights out, like that. So with the house lights out, what I should be able to do is have a look at the front of the cork as I manipulate the mirror. And you should be able to see that, uh, if I get this in the right place, that that will illuminate the front of the cork. So with that set, what I'll do is just grab another image. There, that's worked quite well. I think you should be able to see that this is now quite well illuminated. This is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. But you should also notice that we've now picked up uh, this highlight in the glass. We've lost all the highlights due to the um, house lights, but we've gained a highlight due to the mirror. So the simple way around that is just to now remove the mirror, like this, and grab yet another image, and we can use this as a blank slate. There we are. So now we've got a pair of images, this one with the cork lit uh, but highlight in the glass, and this one with no highlight in the glass, uh, but the cork isn't lit. So with the two images now captured, it just remains to go into Photoshop and blend the two together. So here we are in Photoshop. So this is uh, the first of the images with the cork not illuminated. And this is the image with the cork illuminated, but the highlights in the glass. So the first thing to do is just to make a stack of these two images uh, so that each image is on a different layer. So to do that, I'll just go to File, come down to Scripts, go down to Load Files into Stack, ask it to add the open files, and just click on OK. So here we are. You can see that uh, Photoshop has made this stack, and each image is on a separate layer. I can turn this one on and off, like that. OK, so with this one uh, selected, what I'm going to do is just add a layer mask by clicking on the icon, like so. And I'm just going to invert that to hide it, like that. So now, wherever I paint in white on this mask, it will reveal that part of the image. So I'll just alter the foreground colour to white, grab a paintbrush, make my paintbrush very soft and probably a bit bigger, like that. And then just starting at the bottom here, what I'm going to do is just bring in the other image, like that. Lovely. Now you can see it's also brought in part of the uh, highlight that we didn't want. Uh, so in order to get rid of that, I will just change back to black, and I'll change this brush for a smaller one, like 
like this. And we'll just paint in where the uh, highlight is. There. That's very good. Uh, the only other thing that I think I'd like to do is just lighten up this foreground ever so slightly. I'll just make that more of a white. Um, I don't want it a complete white, so what I'm going to do is sample uh, a bit of the, uh, the background here. So I'll just change to selecting the image on that layer, like that. So with that image selected, I'll find the eyedropper tool. And just place that somewhere around here and just grab that, like so. Now with that selected, I'll just find a paintbrush again. This time I'm going to make it quite large. Like so. And I'm going to add another layer to my stack, like this. And I'm just going to paint in um, the bottom of the image here. Uh, so I'm just going to actually make that a bit bigger, I think. Yeah, that was made better. We'll just paint that in, just to lighten it up, like so. There we are. There. Uh, now you see that I've actually gone a bit too far on the edges here. Uh, so again, being on a completely separate layer, uh, this means that I can always go backwards. Uh, so I can either start again or just erase some bits. So I'll just use the erasing tool and just take those bits off where I don't want them, like that. I might have just caught the edge of the cork as well. There we are. That's better. So with those little bits done, it just remains to select a crop and finish off the image. So I'll pick a ratio of uh, 16 by 9. And I'll just pull the handles in slightly from the edges. And the other thing I'm going to do is just make sure that the horizon line here is straight. Not too sure it is. So just using the straighten command, just click on that and literally draw a line across what you want to be the horizon. There we are. And it will straighten it up for you. Good. So with that set, what I'm going to do is just select that. And there we have it. An arty, impressionistic picture. The lighting is the key to the supple tones and graduations in the finished image. And overall, I think that's worked quite well. OK. So, if you like seeing how I do these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.